In today's video, you're gonna be hearing answers to the question, what is the biggest mistake that walleye anglers make? Now I asked this to a number of the different Northland pros and I got the responses for you for this video. We're gonna start things off with bro. Well, one of the biggest mistakes I see in the winter time for people who target walleyes is over drilling an area and they just drill the fish out of there. Uh, just imagine a flat, a basin flat, like on Red Lake or Leech Lake or Lake of the Woods, and just drilling nonstop. Sometimes it, it makes action, you know, it moves fish around, but too much drilling is not good. And there's a reason that there's big slicks of big walleyes in the summertime that boats can troll through and not the big slicks under the roads because fish don't like noise and they move away. So the loner on the sled always gets those giant fish on Lake of the Woods. It's the same in, with any lake, over drilling. And in the summertime, it's pestering the fish too much. If they don't bite, leave, come back. Take little bits of blood each time you go. If you catch a few fish and they're starting to spook, don't chase them away. You know, just uh, take what you get and move on. Uh, clicking the numbers on your schools of fish will make the fish, ex well, basically you'll blow up the fish and blowing up the fish, just watch it on an underwater camera. If you keep hounding your fish, you'll watch the school just take off and they disappear and they don't come back to the, those spots sometimes. So you literally blow them up. If you play it in fast, fast forward motion. You know, one of the biggest mistakes I see walleye anglers uh, making is fishing where there's not fish or specifically in the depth zone where there's not fish. And, and that covers, uh, the gamut. That means when they're pulling crankbaits on long lines, they're, they're, they're not anywhere near contact with bottom. They're just randomly pulling average uh, rumble shad or whatever down a break line and they're nowhere near the bottom and they're probably not going to get bit. Uh, I can think of it in jig scenarios where they're popping the jig a lot and, and the bait on every jig stroke, especially with wind, rides higher and higher above a fish's head or I can think of it in, in terms of rigging where your speed is too great and, and again, the sinker and everything is riding above the fish. So with walleyes, one of the lessons I, I was forced to learn early is you really need to keep that bait near bottom in a lot of scenarios, unless your electronics are telling you different. And key in doing that is fishing each of those lure classes in a way that ensures they're literally within inches of the bottom. That's, that's really just walleye fishing 101, but a lot of people uh, could, could, could use a little bit of help with some of those. So one mistake I see people make when they're walleye fishing is not watching their rod tip. There's a lot of times when those fish, they'll just grab your bait and they'll swim along with it or they'll, they'll be biting real light and if you watch your rod tip you can actually see the bite taking place. Fishing memories, it's for sure fishing memories. I mean, guys go out and they're, oh, I caught them here yesterday, and then they fish there for four hours. And they don't fish fish, they fish memories of catching fish. And uh, you yeah, actually, look, there was an article written by Joel, I don't know, years and years ago. But we brought it up, we were ice fishing. I'm like, what are we doing here? You know, do you know there's fish here? You're fishing memories. And he was like, a jerk. And it wasn't really, it wasn't, I was trying to be a jerk. It was more like, you know, are there fish here or not? You know, like, is it, that's so, to round it out, that is the biggest mistake wall anglers make. Verify that there's fish there first. Mark fish, side image fish, down image fish, whatever you have to do to, to make sure there's fish there and then start, you know, figure out the best way to extract them. That's the, that's the whole key to, to walleye fishing is trying to find your numbers of fish first, then figuring out the best way to extract them and then dialing in color and speed from there. So I guess this starts, it's a, it's a pile of things that walleye anglers make, you know, their biggest mistakes, but one is fishing memories or, you know, you have to have a starting point. So maybe use that memory as a, as a starting point for location, and if they're not there, you then you just go on the hunt based on what you know. What time of year is it? What's the water temp? Has anything recently hatched in the water? Um, on big lakes, is your surface temp, you know, your surface temp can be extremely deceiving. You could have a surface temp of, of 70 degrees, 65 degrees, and literally two feet underneath the water, it's 40, 45, 48 degrees, which plays a huge difference. So sometimes water temp can really, can really mess you up. Those are all really good tips that will for sure help you catch more fish if you pay attention this year. And I'm gonna throw one more onto the top of the pile, one more little goodie, one mistake, and it's kind of piggybacks off 
what has been said already, and that is you don't wanna be fishing unproductive water. Now, Brad just got done talking about how you don't wanna fish memories, and that definitely falls underneath this umbrella. Sometimes you could fish areas where they used to be, but they aren't anymore, or maybe on opener, they're always here on opener, but maybe conditions are a little bit different this year, and they're not gonna be there. But I'm gonna say not only memories, but also just areas that don't have fish, now, if you're not marking a lot of fish on your graph, then it's probably time to move on. And when I say on your graph, that could be just directly underneath you on your 2D sonar or out on side imaging. If you're not casting into little tiny marks, then you're probably not gonna be catching fish. But to me, what's the worst one is that when you are actually marking fish and there's fish in the area, and sometimes you have to move to catch fish. Now, sometimes, You'll pull up on a school, there'll be plenty of fish there, and you'll be like, all right, what do I gotta do to make these things bite because they're not biting whatever I happen to pull out. And sometimes you can work those fish and figure out what they're willing to snap on, but other times, they're just not in like a really good feeding mood, and it can pay to go find another school of fish that's more willing to bite. I've seen it time and time again, where I'll move from maybe one spot that's in 30 feet of water, and I'll hit this other 18 foot hump over here and I'll get a number of bites. And sometimes, you know, it can be a depth thing, but other times it can just be a school thing, you know? So maybe I have fish that are out in 30 feet of water on an edge and I'll go fish another spot that looks really, really similar to that. And these fish won't bite, but these ones will. So it's just something to try and pay attention to. If you've ever fished tournaments, you've definitely been in a situation where like, for example, fall tournaments, you'll see a lot of people rigging big minnows over the side of the boat or vertical jigging with puppet minnows or casting them. And so basically, long story short, everybody is kind of doing something really similar and it's really more about finding active fish and finding the spots and getting on the right areas during the right uh, bite windows as well. So if there's weather moving in or you know, maybe a moon phase change or anything like that. Sometimes that can trigger bites with schools of fish that weren't really snappy before. But that's just something to think about. Sometimes just because there's fish underneath you doesn't mean that they're gonna be in a good mood to bite and you need to go find different fish that are more active. More often than not, it's gonna pay if you're changing depths, if you're changing environments, you know, going from rocks to weeds or deep to shallow, stuff like that. But sometimes that doesn't, ma that doesn't matter as much either. So something to think about, but if you learned something in this video and you enjoyed it, hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more awesome videos coming in the future and we will see you in the next one.